4. Oorang Madan Sometime in the 1940s, a chilling distress call was made, claiming that a ship's captain and his entire crew were killed. The state of Baltimore and the Silver Star, two American ships, replied to the call after receiving a message in Morse code that couldn't be understood, except for the last three words, I am dying. The two ships were able to pinpoint where the distress call originated by utilizing UK monitoring systems. The Silver Star swiftly changed its course and headed in the direction of the SS Orang Madan. They were on their way to offer assistance despite the confusing call. The Orang Madan showed no evidence of damage when the Silver Star arrived. The radio remained silent despite their attempts to contact the ship. The Silver Star's crew organized a boarding party after several unsuccessful calls to investigate what had transpired on the vessel. What the crew discovered was appalling. After boarding the ship, the squad found the bodies of the Oorang Madan's crew laying all over the place. The bodies of some men were twisted or disfigured, and several of them had their hands up as if pointing at something. But to their surprise, all of the deceased men had terrified expressions on their faces. There was a possibility that they had seen something frightening just before dying. The Silver Star crew determined that no foul play was involved because there weren't any signs of struggle or physical wounds on any of the bodies. When they were finished investigating, they decided it wouldn't be right to leave the ship behind, so they thought they'd tow it behind them instead. Unfortunately, a fire broke out in the ship's cargo hold just as the crew was about to attach a tow line. Shortly after, the vessel became fully engulfed in flames and it eventually exploded. The Oorang Madan was launched into the air by the blast before it sank beneath the surface of the ocean. Luckily, the Silver Star's crew was able to escape just in time, and there was no damage to their vessel. Sadly, any proof of the Orang Madan's existence and what happened to her crew went up in flames and sank with the rest of the ship. Interestingly, there's no known marine records of the Orang Madan. Despite the fact that every ship is required to register its routes, port destinations, and stops, there's no records that can be found of the vessel. Based on that fact alone, it suggests that the Oorang Madan didn't exist at all, and that the story about the ship and its crew is merely fictional. The counter-argument to that theory is that any records or registration data were destroyed after the crew of the Silver Star witnessed what happened to the ship. There's even rumors that the CIA could have been involved in a cover-up. There were several opinions regarding what may have occurred to the crew and what started the fire when people learned about the Orang Madan. Some think the ship was carrying horrific chemical weapons that inadvertently killed the defenseless civilian crew that was tasked with transporting them. However, there are people out there that believe the crew was terrified by either demons or extraterrestrials. There's also conspiracy theorists who say that Orang Madan was really a military vessel with disguised military personnel on board. They believe the ship was carrying an undisclosed weapon that would have altered the course of history. That is, of course, if the Orang Madan hadn't gone up in flames and sank to the bottom of the ocean. A lot of people have started to theorize that the Orang Madan never truly existed because of the numerous stories about it. Despite the vessel's official mentions, it's still unknown exactly what happened to the Phantom Ship, whether it was a government cover-up or just a long-running urban legend. Nobody can say for sure. 3. The Golden Eagle Not even a year after it was released, Stephen King's suspenseful novel about a murderous Plymouth Fury named Christine was made into a movie. The 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition, known as Golden Eagle, served as the inspiration for the book. The police department in Old Orchard Beach, Maine, originally purchased the car. Then, after the initial purchase, it started killing anyone it came across for the next 20 years. Locals still stand by the claim that the car was possessed, despite there being little evidence to back it up. The car only spent a very brief period of time with the old Orchard Beach Police Department, but three different officers went home to murder their families after driving the Golden Eagle. Afterward, they took their own lives. These tragic events prompted the rest of the officers to sell their vehicle. An older man bought it from them and allegedly gifted it to a woman named Wendy Allen, who still owns the car to this day. She drove the car without fear, even though she knew about its history. 
Despite her demonstrating that there was nothing wrong with the Golden Eagle, the residents of Old Orchard Beach weren't convinced and still viewed the car as a threat. Some even went as far as to say it was possessed by a demon. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, the car was vandalized by a handful of church members and other rebels in the town. Their goal was to get rid of anything evil that might have been dwelling within the vehicle. However, this proved to be a horrible mistake. As a result of the vandalism, anyone who was involved met a gruesome fate. Most of the vandals were run over by 18-wheeler trucks, killing them instantly. Some of them were even decapitated in the process. Those who weren't killed by the semi-trucks were fatally struck by lightning. Unfortunately, the deaths didn't stop with the vandals. It was reported in 2007 that a teen was dared by his friends to touch the car. Then mysteriously just a few weeks later, he set his house on fire after murdering his entire family. And sadly, the vehicle was also involved in a couple of disturbing incidents involving young kids. There are several stories of children being hit by cars and landing directly on the evil Golden Eagle's hood or nearby it. Another church trying to get rid of the vehicle in 2010. After stealing it from Wendy Allen, members of the church spread pieces of the car all over various junkyards after chopping it up. When she discovered her car was missing, Allen was extremely distraught. She loved her car, haunted or not. She posted about the incident online and eventually gained a supportive following. Soon she had a team of people who helped her track down the majority of the Golden Eagle's parts. Alan feels that the church targets her not only for the car, but because she's interested in the occult. They've called her the Sea Witch of Old Orchard Beach, and they say she's gone around town claiming that she'll use the powers of the car to cast spells of death against them. However, she's denied each of these rumors. Alan loves the Golden Eagle, regardless of its history. She herself has reflected on times where it would release the seat buckles or jam the steering wheel sometimes even opening its doors at random times while she and her family were inside of it. These days, judging by the current status of the car, it seems like its reign of terror has come to an end. Do you think it's really possible for a vehicle to house a demonic entity? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. 2. Pennsylvania's Bus to Nowhere Buses are everywhere in Philadelphia, day and night. Most of them have scheduled pickup and drop-off hours, as well as frequent passengers. But according to a local urban legend, one bus has no destination, and it pops up randomly for people who need it. Only those stuck in deep sorrow have boarded this particular bus, ready to bring them to a place of emotional rescue. During this level of sadness, the fate of the bus comes through, offering them a chance to be saved from the clutches of depression. When its trip is complete, the wandering bus, as it's frequently called, disappears into thin air before reappearing somewhere else. The bus and its driver, who always keeps his face hidden, are connected to those in need. The driver is able to send someone who needs to be picked up, and he'll catch their attention while determining whether or not they're worthy at the same time. He doesn't stop right away, but those in need of help apparently know that the bus is for them. However, they have to wave the bus down in order to board. If a person sees the bus and doesn't wave it down, they'll never see it again. After boarding, the passengers sit in silence and don't speak a word. The entire ride is quiet, with the driver staring ahead, hiding his face. Passengers are aware of one another, but they don't pay attention to the other riders. Once seated, deep reflection begins, where people are forced to face their inner demons. It's been reported that the passengers act out the events in their lives, specifically where everything went wrong for them, in the recesses of their mind. Only when they understand why things turned out the way they did for them do they gain the ability to leave their pain and regret behind. Travel times on the bus vary from person to person. For some, it could take a few hours. For others, it could take days, and for a small handful of people, the journey lasts for years. It depends on how long it takes them to figure out what brought them there in the first place. When a person is ready to leave, they instinctively know, and they simply have to tug on the cord, prompting the driver to stop and let them off. It's been compared to being snapped out of a trance, 
Some leave triumphant, with a wonderful new outlook on life, ready to rejoin society. The lucky ones board the bus right before things in their lives get bad, and they're able to remedy what happened and fix it before it's too late. Because of the bus, they're able to get through their past by reliving it. Some, however, are unable to face their past because of their inability to face their emotions. Others simply won't come to terms with their wrongdoing, although they do try. However, it's been said that a breakthrough never comes to those who feel they've done nothing wrong, leaving them to ride the bus for the remainder of their lives. There are also those with issues that are beyond what can be solved. Even though the bus is meant for wiping the slate clean, certain things such as awful acts against humanity do not deserve forgiveness. Those few individuals are aware that they're considered a lost cause and are forced to leave the bus, having gained nothing from the experience. Many have referred to the bus as Bus Zero, and it's alleged that the first mention of it came from works of fiction published in 2011. However, dozens of Philly locals challenge the rumor that it's fiction because they claim they've experienced the bus personally. Either this bus, or one very similar to it, has apparently been seen in several places throughout the northeastern United States, further adding to the mystery. It appears to know where it's required and arrives there, operating between the hours of dusk and dawn. The bus to nowhere might be a figment of the public's imagination, or the result of mass hysteria brought on by the first mention of it in 2011. For a lot of people, it's difficult to determine whether it's real or not. Now, this leaves us with one question. Would you ride the bus to nowhere if given the chance? 1. Lincoln's Phantom Train The 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, spent his entire life in a strange environment full of bizarre happenings and supernatural encounters. Even into adulthood, he was surrounded by the occult because his wife Mary was into spiritualism. She was also a believer in omens and attempted to contact her deceased son Willie by holding seances. Unfortunately, Willie passed away at the age of 11 due to typhoid fever in 1862. Mystery also surrounded Lincoln's untimely demise. He experienced a death-related dream about two weeks before he was assassinated. During his dream, Lincoln went to the East Room after he heard people crying. After discovering soldiers standing over a body, he asked them who had died and why were they dead in the White House. A soldier told him it was the president and that he'd been killed by an assassin. He revealed his eerie dream to his wife and a handful of friends, but tragically, there was nothing they could do, and he was assassinated on April 14, 1865. He was killed in the presidential box at Ford's Theater in D.C. by John Wilkes Booth. Sadly, he only lived for a few hours after the shooting, and he passed away on the morning of April 15th. The entire nation went into mourning, as flags were flown at half-mast and bells sang their song across the city. After he died, Lincoln and Willie were both placed in coffins. They were put on a train where they would travel to Springfield, Illinois, Lincoln's hometown. They were to be buried there at Oak Ridge Cemetery. People lined up along the train's route, which ran from Washington to Illinois. Many came to pay their respects to the man who fought so hard during the Civil War. The train was known as the Lincoln Special, and it reached Springfield on May 3, 1865, after departing on April 21st. Allegedly, a phantom form of the train could be seen and heard coming every year at the end of April. It's been reported that as the train passes by, time stands still. Watches and clocks stop, and the air is cool and crisp. And an eerie presence can be felt nearby as clouds block out the moon. While some claim to hear somber music emanating from the train, others swear there's no sound at all when it passes. As the train draws closer, some people notice smoke spewing from the stack, while others hear a creepy whistle. There have been rumors of skeletons dressed all in blue standing guard near Lincoln's flag-draped coffin. As the train disappears from view, flags and streamers connected to it supposedly wave in the wind, but no sound is heard. To this day, gatherings are held to watch for the phantom funeral train in communities across the seven states. One of these events is held in Albany, New York, on the evenings of April 26th and 27th, 
and the other is held on April 29th in Urbana, Ohio. Which of these urban legends did you find the most interesting? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.